Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to the third webinar of the MSpot Cycle One Valley Edition. Uh, as I'm sure you all know the drill, uh, we had uh, versions last week and the past week uh, on about the the MSpot Cycle One um, program. Uh, we will today conduct our third webinar where we will talk about um, where we will talk about uh, the railway uh, area of the of the Valley Edition um, M spot. So um, introducing myself, uh, I'm Guilherme Marinho. I'm a corporate accelerator for Neo Ventures. And I'd also like to highlight uh, everyone who is in the background. Uh, so hi, Jesse, hi, Lorena. Uh, they're with me and they work together. Um, we work together as a team uh, in, in to conduct this program. And I'd also like to uh, say hi to everyone uh, at Vali, uh, who are, are with me here today. You get to know them in a second. So, um, as I said, we're talking about here today, M -Spot, about M-Spot Cycle 1, um, and we're here to talk about the railways. And just to highlight a little bit about the program, um, Inside Mining Hub, we conduct M Starts, which are collective challenges for all of the mining companies um, associated with the with the Mining Hub. But on, on this M Spot program, we conduct specific challenges who are freely defined teams by a single mining company. In this case, here, uh, Vali. Uh, this brings agility. This brings networking. This brings uh, a better uh, reach to the community. Um, this brings high prioritization of the challenges uh, and then high results to the uh, mining company um, established uh, during the, the program. Okay, so they, all the challenges are uh, defined uh, with the exclusive interests and according to the operational and strategic need of that company. Here is our full schedule. Uh, we are going through this every week and we will remain going through this um, every single week until uh, we reach our deadline for applications on October 9th. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, August 9th. Um, and we're going uh, every single week on Wednesdays, we have a schedule uh, of every single Wednesday at 2, 2 p.m. We're going to talk about L every single challenge offered in this M-SPOT program. We're already working on this program since April. We had a, a really fun setup stage where we conducted all of the prioritization of the challenges and all of the drawings of these challenges. And now uh, we're going to the community and, say, and saying, hey, come on, please. Um, apply yourselves to our program. We have our deadline for applications until um, nine, as I said, until nine uh, on, on August. So if you please go to mininghub.com, you'll be able to check every single challenge and also be able to check the application link and go to the website and apply yourselves. After that, we're going to do a, a selection of those startups. And um, from the applied ones, we will conduct interviews with six for each challenge. Um, from those six, three will be selected to the bootcamp stage, which we, um, ideally will be conducted um, presentially. But we're also planning to do that on uh, from home, um, from home yourself, from home base so you can uh, actually uh, participate virtually from the bootcamp stage if that's not the case. So that will end uh, on, on October, on late October. And after that, one startup will be selected to conduct a test uh, as a proof of concept of that solution to that challenge and to see if that fits uh, and to see if that actually solves uh, Valley's um, problems and valleys, challenges, uh, and see if that can be scaled up. Those will be conducted on late, late this year and early 2021 in a valley operational site. And we will end this program on uh, mid-March 
uh, with some uh, with all the result, results from this test stage and also a demo day. Okay, so with no longer uh, no further ado, let's go and check the challenges uh, that we're going to discuss here today. So we're going to talk about uh, today the railways um, challenges, but I also like to say that uh, if you also check out mininghub.com and also go to, to the mspot uh, webpage inside mininghub.com, you will find all of the challenges who are listed in this program. And we're going to talk about uh, energy, railways, geotechnics, technical marketing, navigation, palletizing and port, which are our uh, goal areas for this cycle one. As I said, we're going to talk about railways uh, challenges today. And today uh, with me, we have Rodrigo Pirola, um, who is a technician from Valley. And also we have his team uh, composed of uh, also Andrea Franca, and Luciano Cassaro, and also Robson Sirtoli, who are all joined uh, here today. I'd like to welcome you all. We're going to talk a little bit about those challenges. And uh, for the first one, um, Rodrigo will be speaking in Portuguese, and I will be conducting uh, a translation as he, uh, as he speaks. So please uh, bear with me while he's um, do, well, he makes his explanation in Portuguese, and I, I'll, I, after that, I will translate that to English. So, uh, Rodrigo, if you'd be so kind to please start uh, describing your first challenge, which is the effective communication of field restrictions on the railroad. Okay. Rodrigo, você pode começar a falar uh, em português e eu vou uh, traduzindo. Ok, obrigado. É, a gente vai falar sobre comunicação eficaz é, de restrições de campo nas ferrovias e o objetivo desse, desse problema é solucionar como a ferro, a, os operadores de manutenção incluem as restrições de via na ferrovia. So the goal of this challenge is to is to instruct all of the field workers on how they um, place the restriction signs at the railroad. Hoje, toda a sinalização de campo existente é feita via placas de sinalização na qual os maquinistas que conduzem os trens são obrigados a visualizá-las e cumpri-las. All of these signings uh, on the railroads are performed by, by boards and the train driver has a great responsibility and the need for eye contact in order to see them. You change the, the, the screen? Okay. No, we're still on the effective communication uh, challenge. Ok. Uh, diariamente, nós temos entre 30 a 40 times de mantenedores, empregados de manutenção, que fazem esse processo ao longo da ferrovia, dos seus 906 quilômetros, e anterior ao início da manutenção, e posterior ao seu a sua realização são necessárias a colocações de placas físicas na ferrovia. So we have up to 30 to 40 teams per day along the railroad uh, working um, on on on, ma on manufacturing and uh, and maintenance of this uh, railroad and and even before and after uh, this maintenance there is the need to install um, boards signaling um, every single restriction on the railroad for the train drivers essas placas que são colocadas ao longo da via elas são sujeitas a vandalismos a intempéries a quedas a furtos Né, dentre outros problemas que venham a acontecer, 
que, consequentemente, podem fazer com que o maquinista não cumpra o, o que está previsto nessa placa e venha a ocorrer algum acidente ferroviário. All of those signs and boards are um, there can be theft, vandalism, boatfall, accidents, uh, or um, any issues with climate and, and access to the railways, um, which can interrupt the signaling for, for the train driver. And that can cause an accident risk and the less precision of the communication uh, from, from those signs to the train driver. Vale ressaltar que ao longo da ferrovia, a gente está em um ambiente com baixo é, sinal de celular e de GPS. It is worth uh, to say that during um, the uh, all the extension of the railroad, there is a variable field signal. So there's low um, internet and GPS signal all along the, the, the railway, the railroad. Então, o que a gente busca é uma solução que seja de posse dos empregados de via permanente que estão dando as manutenções ao longo da via para que eles consigam realizar a colocação de placas de forma virtual sem a necessidade de deslocamento. So what we're looking for is a solution that can that will allow our field workers to to install those boards and those signs in a virtual way, which would prevent all of the risks involved in installing them and also um, com communicate uh, correctly the, all of the restrictions to the train driver. Essa comunicação dessas placas virtuais serão enviadas para o centro de controle e os centros de controle, através dos computadores de bordos, enviarão para as, os maquinistas que estão conduzindo as locomotivas dos trens. Those virtual signs will be communicated to the operational control, who will then communicate to the train driver um, all of the restrictions they will face uh, in, the up, upcoming, in the upcoming railroad. Basicamente é isso o que a gente tem como apresentação do problema. We that's that's what we have for the um, for the problem. Um, Rodrigo, we had we had some very interesting questions yesterday, and if um, if there aren't any uh, new questions, I'd like to repeat a few of them, as I think that they were very uh, interesting and would also help us to characterize this problem a little bit better. So this was a question that uh, was sent to us yesterday during the Portuguese version. Uh, also, I'd like to uh, add that if you want, you can follow our webinars every single uh, Tuesday at, at 2 p.m. In, in the Portuguese version and every Wednesday at 2 p.m. in the English version. So uh, what do you think of creating a communication system in which the means of sending data are in the mesh tracks? Make the railway a series of communication and data collection cells. Uh, this system would be based on the sound and fixed by mobile assets and sounds analyzed by an AI. É aquela ideia de fazer a transmissão de sons pela própria via e interpretar isso por inteligência artificial. É, então, se essa informação a gente conseguir chegar a bordo do centro de controle e, consequentemente, no maquinista, é uma solução viável. É uma solução possível, na verdade. Viável a gente tem que ver dependendo dos custos, né? Mas eu vejo como uma solução possível a ser apresentada e a gente avaliar num comitê técnico específico. It is a possibility as long as it communicates to the operational control who will be, then be able to uh, extend this information to the train drivers. So that has to be analyzed within the test period um, of the proof of concept of this um, of the solution, if it is applicable to this challenge. Mm -hmm. 
Another question that uh, was sent to us yesterday is if there is video monitoring of the entire railway, uh, if there are CCTV images themselves um, that could give an insight into the problems on the railway. Ele quer saber sobre as imagens de CCTV que, que existem da, na, na ferrovia. A gente tem circuito fechado de TV, né? mas ele não tem a cobertura total da ferrovia e a dificuldade é como enviar essas imagens para dentro de uma cabine de maquinista para que ele veja essa sinalização em tempo real e cumpra o que está previsto na placa. Né? Então, assim, é, é uma outra avaliação a ser feita da possibilidade, né? principalmente da capacidade de transmissão dessas câmeras, mas hoje a gente tem e não tem a cobertura total da ferrovia. Okay, so um, there is not uh, a complete um, there is not a complete view of the railways in the CCTV images, and uh, also that would be have to be that that would have to be transmitted to the train driver in a real time situation so that he can that he so that he could uh, operate and make decisions. Uh, in real time with all of the restrictions in those areas. Um, so if that could be arranged, that would be a solution, but that, uh, that also has to be tested. So uh, Rodrigo, I'd like to thank you for um, your contributions. This has been very uh, instructive. And for the next challenge, I would uh, like to call uh, Robson Sirtoli um, so that he can give us his explanation. Uh, he will be speaking in English, so you can you guys will be able to hear directly from him. Robson, if you please. Okay. Hello, everyone. And today I'll, I'll explain about our risk. And our is mitigation of the run over risk in the railroad workshops. Okay. Uh, and today in, internally in the workshops, we have constant movement of people that these people, it's maintain the focus and maintenance. And um, another problem we have inside that our workshop, it's a lot of equipments run in low, low speed, but this is very, but high risk. And uh, our main, maintainer, it's probably walking, it's walking around the, in the action range. And this risk implements in the risk of fatal risk, in a fatal incident for us. And another very, um, a lot of situations on the way forklift to locomotives and high movement in track mobiles. And uh, we have inside in the, our workshop, right? And uh, another problem and the lack of stand, standard communication. And it's not a standard. And um, about this, this not a standard communication ends up probably a high risk of collisions. Okay. And about this, we we need to reduce for human action because when we reduce a human action, it will reduce this risk. And uh, we need a active solution. We search for active solution for save our maintenance and uh, probably if you need to stop the equipment it's great for us but uh, and uh, inside our workshop we have uh, many many movies happens in the same time and um, we have a lot of procedures for communication but this procedure is not applied inside uh, the record shop, wagon shop. And um, we have a lot of certain alarm signal, signals when the main blocking, it's using the plates to block a line. And we don't have another, another options to block on the wagon shop or track or equipment. Today, all equipments need to use the our high plantation for operator. And this is a, a very high risk for us. And uh, for me, this is uh, our 
our challenge and uh, we need to reduce these risks in turn our wagon workshop. Okay, for me it's uh, a more explain. Robson? Yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah. Uh, that was very clarifying as to uh, how the ch this challenge, um, how, how it is conducted and how uh, it is important within the, the area itself, uh, especially when we're talking about uh, the safety of workers. This is actually um, some of the most important things that uh, I believe inside uh, the whole of the Valley, of Valley operations. Um, yeah. One, I, we had a question yesterday, and I'd also like to, uh, to bring that back, as, as I believe that this was a very uh, interesting discussion, uh, that there is already um, some, some, there are already some solutions for warehouses for forklift control, uh, even with the possibility of turning off those forklifts to preserve life. Uh, have you ever seen one solution such as that? Do you think that would this would be applicable here? Sure, uh, sure. I think this is applicable here. Just show us the solution. We can provide a test internally. It's no problem. Okay, uh, so that that would be that would be nice. Uh, one one thing that I, I actually would like to clarify um, is that this needs to be uh, fully automated, right? Um, the the desire is that there is no human um, need for action in, in, in signaling that there is risk or that there is movement within um, the workshop, all right? Is right, it? yeah. Great, um, so I'd like to call um, André Franca and uh, if, you, if you'd be so kind to explain to us um, the, just how important this challenge is uh, inside Valley. That would be great. Okay, thank you, Guilherme. Uh, can you read me? Well, um, well, this is a important challenge because uh, it impacts many people and teams who uh, who are working remote uh, directly. Uh, certainly, uh, there will be at least, uh, uh, I, I don't know, uh, 20 or 15 uh, people working per day in, on the workshops. Uh, in either, it, it's uh, uh, in the sense we want to, to, to take uh, these people out of risks of being run over or prevent people from getting, uh, getting hurt. There is a, a, a value, a values value. It's the first one. It's a life is first. So this this this, this shows how it's important to value. That's great to hear, and there. Um, I, I do uh, actually believe that um, the, the safety of workers should actually come. Uh, first of all, and, and it's great to hear that uh, you're really, really worried about that, uh, just as much as to actually uh, include that as a challenge um, within all those railways uh, workshops. So going to uh, our next challenge uh, and final one for today, uh, I'd like to um, call Luciano Cassaro. Luciano is also a Valley engineer from uh, the railroad um, area, and he's going to talk about uh, the view of the location, the technical characteristics, and assets condition at the field. Luciano uh, is also going to speak in Portuguese, and I'm going to translate right after him. Okay. Luciano, por favor, quando você quiser. Ok, obrigado. Nosso desafio é está na possibilidade né, de localizar ativos ao longo da ferrovia. So our challenge is the ability to uh, locate assets uh, along the railroad. A nossa ferrovia ela é abrangente, ela abrange uma extensão de 900 quilômetros. The whole length of the railroad is 900 kilometers, so it's 
actually quite large. E ativos fazem parte da, da ferrovia, por exemplo, pontes, túneis, viadutos, travessias, são ativos é, importantes que fazem parte da ferrovia e são, é, são realizadas manutenções desses ativos no dia a dia da, da rotina das equipes de campo. So, do, uh... In the, in the duration of this railroad, there are several assets, such as tunnels, bridges, and uh, those would have been mapped and uh, located within the railroad. Esses ativos, eles possuem informações importantes para, para o processo de manutenção, como, por exemplo, a sua localização de quilômetro ou de geodésico, possui informações de dimensões, altura, peso, é, comprimento e também e também informações da sua condição que são frutos das inspeções de rotina das equipes do campo. All those assets uh, have information that needs to be assessed, such as the location, the technical characteristics, the condition that are uh, measured through inspect through uh, from inspections and also the track records of name of maintenance and all of those uh, information all, all of this information is important for the um, team in the field to perform its uh, its maintenance essas informações tanto da, da dos ativos das localizações e as demais informações elas estão concentradas em áreas matriciais, áreas de escritório da companhia. So all of these information uh, are not uh, located in the field, but uh, actually in the office. E o desafio que a gente é, necessita é fazer com essas informações elas sejam consumidas no campo tanto para as equipes de campo localizar os ativos na ferrovia, podendo ser geodésico por GPS, e estando lá no ativo, no campo, para localizá-lo, é, consumir as informações que são é, características de cada ativo. E o desafio é fazer essa informação chegar às equipes so that they can uh, locate, e easily locate all of the assets and quickly assess how they are, um, all of their information on um, size and technical conditions and the need of, of maintenance. Rodrigo, are you with us? Luciano? Yes. Yes, tô. Pode repetir a pergunta, por favor? Um, I believe that Luciano has had... Voltou, voltou, voltou. Uh, yeah. é... oh, you're back, Luciano. Ok. Ok, <laughs> yeah, let's go. Voltar a pergunta, é, voltar é, o último ponto de tensão. É, também a possibilidade de traçar a rota de chegada nesses ativos. Aonde eu estou para chegar nesse ativo. The solution also has to include um, an actual guide or a map um, to inform the few teams how to get to that asset um, in tracing from where the, this team is to where they need to be to perform the actual maintenance. Então, esse é o nosso, esse é o, esse é o, é o desafio que eu estou propondo para para nossa nosso problema aqui na ferrovia. Obrigado. Né? Okay, so thank you, um, Luciano. And uh, we had some quite uh, very interesting questions uh, yesterday. And I'd also like to uh, add that uh, this solution uh, probably needs to be assessed for the team, uh, uh, by the team um, in the field. So also uh, there's not a lot of um, signal from both uh, GPS and, and uh, internet available. So this needs to be uh, quite offline 
um, or and, and they need to to get that information um, where they are and where those assets are. Um, there's a uh, there was a, a nice question yesterday that is uh, if you have the estimate of the total amount of these assets. Se Luciano, se você sabe o tamanho a quantidade é, total de ativos. Ok. É, ativos são em torno de 10 mil ativos que, né, entre de infraestrutura e de superestrutura. There's quite a large number, almost 10,000 um, assets, including infrastructure and also uh, superstructures. Um, Does the system, the, another question is if the system, if, does the system uh, where these assets are registered have an integration API uh, or some access to the database or should the solution provide a new registration? Ele quer saber se uh, os, a, a solução poderia um, chegar com uma nova, um novo registro desses, desses ativos uh, ou se eles já estão integrados no sistema de vocês. É, algumas informa as informações de localização e dimensões estão em sistema, sim, e as informações de condição, que são as inspeções, é, estão em banco de dados. Ok, so uh, all of those informations are uh, actually on the database already, and it should, uh, they should be passed to the teams uh, on site and uh, on the field. Uh, another another question that um, could lead us to more uh, this important discussion is that uh, is it possible to have 24 hours between the registration of the information of the asset and its availability to some digital or remote access media? É, eles querem saber se pode haver um, um gap, né, uma, uma diferença aí de 24 horas entre o registro da informação daquele ativo e a, a disponibilidade dessa informação para a equipe em campo. Ok, pode sim, perfeito. <laughs> Sem problema. Ok, uh, that's, that's a possibility you can have uh, this 24-hour gap. So there's uh, no need to be on real time for, for the team. Um, so that could be uh, a solution uh, regarding the uh, lack of signal in the whole uh, railway. Guilherme, um, só pra, ta, ta, talvez só para esclarecer mais, é, tanto é que tem um delay do campo chegar nessa nessa área matricial do escritório. Então, faz parte desse delay no, próximo, no próprio processo nosso. Então, não tem problema. It is included in the process as there is uh, already a, a even larger delay in the information, in, in this information reaching the office from the, um, from the, teams, from the teams who are on the field. Um, I think that we have a couple of more questions. Uh, the first one is if, is if that, do you have solutions for preventive and predictive maintenance of fixed and mobile assets? É se vocês já possuem soluções para preventivo e para predizer essas manutenções dos ativos fixos e móveis. Existe, existem algumas iniciativas é, preditivas e, e preventivas também. É, porém isoladas, elas não estão é, consolidadas é, com todas as variáveis que a ferrovia é, 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 fornece para a manutenção. So those solutions already exist, but they're not integrated in a way that allow the field team to have the, that kind of information uh, when and where they need. So that that this integration would have to be uh, performed. And the final question is, uh, how do you know if a track became a little loose after the, pas the passage of a composition or, or, or a passage of a train? So after the train uh, goes through that asset and uh, that um, in damages somehow the, rail the railroad or the asset, um, how is that uh, known by the team? Então, é como é que um, os times sabem que depois que passou o, o trem, um, a, 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 como que aquela passagem ficou solta ou teve, ou teve algum dano? É, são inspeções 
que ocorrem com equipamentos específicos que verificam a, a, todo o sistema da ferrovia e fazem parte da, desse conjunto de informações que eu chamei de eh, as condições do, do, dos ativos. Né? Então, são equipamentos que fazem toda a avaliação do ativo, passam essa informação para esse time que está no escritório, dali esse time consolida todo e tem a visão do ativo. O que é necessário é voltar para o campo, para a equipe do campo conseguir consumir no campo essa informação. Ok. So, um, the, the, the inspections are performed and uh, they will tell uh, the office team of the condition of this asset uh, this technical condition of the asset after uh, the inspection. And what the solution needs to provide is a way that this uh, in this, this level of information um, uh, regarding the assets reaches back for the, um, for the team on the field so that they can, uh, they can per perform the, the maintenance in a more assertive way. Ok, uh, so I'll thank uh, Luciano uh, for his for his time and for his um, all of his knowledge that he shared he, today here with us. Um, this is also a really uh, interesting uh, challenge, as uh, especially uh, with the, the with the size and scale of the of, of the of the railway. So um, over 1,500 kilometers. That's quite a quite a, a large. Um, area to cover and th that is really uh, challenging really interesting to see if that uh, can be solved so uh, please apply your solutions to this challenge uh, finally i'd like to um, ask uh, if andrea wants to stay uh, and add um, something to to this challenge and also uh, to speak about its importance to value uh, okay uh, this is a very interesting challenge because it will bring uh, information to those who need a lot of information and generally do not have it. This information can bring uh, a lot of producity to the teams in the field. Uh, yeah, they, these teams are remotely working, so it's this information so uh, bringing, can bring in uh, a lot of producity. Uh, provide this information on the on the past life of assets, information on necessary maintenance, information on nearby um, nearby uh, assets, and how to access assets location can provide can provide uh, important information. Uh, it's a it's like having a virtual tag with metadata available for each asset so th this is the how how important is this okay thank you andre um and thank you to the uh, railroads team um guys if you if you have any uh, further questions uh or if you're following this um, in after after uh, we're transmitting uh if you're following this um, um the the, the the recording of this in YouTube, you can um, send us your questions afterwards. Please feel free at uh, to, come to reach us at the Mining Hub website. You will find all the contact information uh, there, and I will uh, also uh, tell a little you uh, a little bit about uh, how you can reach us after um, in, in in the further slides. So let's go. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit more about MConnect, which is a, uh, a mining hub program for all of these solutions, which are not specifically linked to uh, to a, a proposed challenge. So, if you, if your solution is not uh, fit for any of the challenges we discussed here today, you can also you, you, you it is uh, actually available uh, available. MConnect is available for you to uh, get, get in touch with Mining Hub and actually. Um, contact all of the mining companies who are um, our members. Um, you can access this through Mining Hub's website and uh, apply there so that all of, the, all of the companies can be able to see your solution and as, if, as, as felt 
uh, necessary if they feel uh, it is something that would, they would like to know a little bit more about, you'll be uh, able to reach them all and, and perform a pitch and also uh, talk to them a little bit more on how you can apply your solution to their reality. Please feel free and uh, access us on mininghub.com uh, slash programmas slash mconnect for you to find uh, the form where we, you will be able to uh, apply your solution to, um, if, if you, as I said, if you did not find that your solution apply to any of the challenges we are uh, proposing um, today and also in, uh, in MSpot cycle one. So um, let's talk a little bit more about our webinar schedule. Uh, this is our third one, and you guys are probably noticing uh, that as we are in quarantine, uh, my hair is growing, and we will be—it will be growing until the end of the of the uh, webinar schedule, all the way to uh, August. So uh, we spoke about the railroads area challenges here today. Uh, we had the Portuguese version yesterday, and next week we're going to speak about uh, geotechnics and technical marketing area challenges on uh, the 8th, uh, it's Wednesday, it's an, at 2 p.m. Um, log in and you will find us here. You will see, find um, me here with all the technicians from this area, from Valley, to speak about all their challenges. Uh, if you're following us on the Portuguese version, you will find uh, Lorena conducting on, on, to, on Tuesday, uh, seven, on, on July 7, uh, at 2 p.m. as well. For the next, uh, next for next webinars, uh, you we will be following all the uh, the areas, uh, all the mentioned areas up, up until uh, the early of August. Um, so we will still speak about the navigation area challenges, the pelletizing area challenges, port, and finally um, reaching our the end of the period for applications uh, on early August. We'll go for a walkthrough of the application process to guide you if you still had, uh, if you still have any doubts. Um, if you if you're applying now and you see uh, and you think that there's something that you might want to clarify uh, with us, please feel free um, to send us an email on uh, contato arroba mininghub. Uh, contato at mininghub.com.br uh, or also uh, reach us uh, in our website at mininghub.com.br Also uh, follow our social media at Facebook, at Instagram, at LinkedIn, at TikTok and at, uh, here at in YouTube. Uh, just search for Mining Hub. You will be able to find all of our social networks. Um, we're concluding uh, our webinar here for today. I'd like to thank you for your audience. I'd like to thank you uh, for following us. Hope you apply. Uh, hope you saw here a, a challenge that fits your solution, that this will be uh, something that will drive your startup forward and will drive your technology forward. Um, here it is. So um, um, I'm thanking you all for following us and hoping that you know, you're all safe and sound uh, wherever you are. Uh, I'd like to I'd also like to uh, say hi to everyone who's following you, uh, following us after collision from home, uh, which happened last week. Uh, and uh, if you're following us uh, after that that event, uh, please give a shout out uh, in the in the comment section and or also uh, in our website and apply to M-Spot Cycle 1. So I'll see you all next week um, on Wednesday at the same time. Um, hope you're follow, following us through, uh, with us and I'll see you. Bye.